If you're going to be having a computer, you're going to be having some RAM in it. So in this episode, what I want to talk about are the different types of RAM technologies that have been out over the years, because I want you to be able, when you're buying a new motherboard or picking a system, to be able to get the kind of RAM you need for your computer. So let's take a look. What I've got here in front of me is a bunch of RAM technologies that span a number of years. And what I'd like to concentrate on is this stick of RAM right here. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the original RAM. This is known as synchronous DRAM or SDRAM. There was RAM before this, but it was the RAM of your forefathers, and I don't want to talk about it. It's not on the exam, and if you find a computer that still uses that ancient RAM, well, it's probably going to be in a museum. So, anyway, SDRAM is interesting because in other episodes, we talk about the system crystal that sets the metronome for the CPU. Well, synchronous means that it's synchronized to the same crystal. And that's very, very helpful because any given click of the clock, we can count on this stick of RAM to do something for us. So SDRAM was the first one out of the box. Now, what's important for me is that as you look at this stick of RAM, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice. Number one, this is 168 pins. Go ahead and count them real quick. Oh, I'm kidding. But what is very important is you'll notice that there are two notches. SDRAM sticks are the only type of RAM out there that have two notches that you're going to run into anymore. Now, SDRAM runs fantastically well, but just like your CPU has a speed, your SDRAM has a speed. So when we talk about SDRAM, we talk about the speeds associated with it. So with SDRAM, it was just running whether your motherboard speed was 66 megahertz, 100 megahertz, whatever it was, that was just the speed associated with it. We're going to see that that gets a little bit more complicated as the technologies improve. So the first big leap forward from SDRAM is this stick right here. This stick is known as double data rate or DDR SDRAM, but most of us will just say DDR RAM. DDR RAM's double data rate is the clue. Basically, for any one given click of the clock, this would give us two bits of information, which was a huge breakthrough and really sped RAM up a lot. Now, the problem we're going to run into now is how do we define that speed? Because when you're going to buy RAM, your motherboard needs RAM at a certain speed. It's in the motherboard book. So when you go to the store to buy your RAM, you need to make sure that you have those speeds. And that's where we come into the DDR or PC ratings. Let me give you an example of this for DDR. Here's some examples of DDR speeds that we used to see. So you'll notice on the left we have a clock speed, and this is basically the speed of the motherboard itself. The speed ratings, or the DDR speed ratings, are known as, it'll say DDR, then a dash, and then some speed. Now if you look closely here, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is double it. It's double data rate, that makes sense. Now the next thing I want you to look at is the PC speed rating. You can see either one of these. When you're buying RAM, it's going to be printed on the RAM stick, or at least in the box you get it in. So this PC speed rating is simply measuring the same speed, but instead of in bits, in bytes. So just take the DDR rating, multiply it times 8, and you get the PC rating. Pretty straightforward, right? Fantastic. DDR was a huge breakthrough, and it's really, really important to me that you be comfortable with these DDR and these PC ratings. In fact, you're about to see a few more of these as we progress through. So, time marches forward, and let's go ahead and get our next generation, and that's right here. This is DDR2. Now, forget the metal cover. To me, these metal covers, they're called heat spreaders. I think they're more sales than anything else. That's my opinion. But what is important, and you've got to look very, very carefully. It's hard to catch this. So... If SDRAM used a 168 pin, DDR used 184 pins, and notice there's only a single notch. DDR2 uses a 240 pin. And it looks like the notches are in the same place, but if I put them right next to each other, notice the subtle offset between those two notches. Be glad for that. The idea is that one particular motherboard is going to use one particular technology of RAM, and they don't want you to accidentally put DDR into a motherboard that needs DDR2. So we're glad that the notches are a little bit offset. DDR2 really set the standard for RAM on systems. It had a long, long lifespan. It also had some speed ratings. Let's take a look at those. So here's a table of common DDR2 speeds. Now keep in mind, in all these tables, I don't list every possible speed. It would be 40 feet long, but these are the more common ones. So once again, we look at our 
core speed, which I call the motherboard speed, and you'll see that's the speed of the system crystal itself. Now, with DDR, it goes ahead and does the double, as I'd mentioned before, but with DDR2, it actually doubles a second time by using this interesting function, which you call a prefetch. But the bottom line is, is DDR2 was really four times faster than regular SD RAM, twice as fast as DDR. So if we take a look at this, first of all, when you look at the speed ratings, again, these are printed on the boxes when you buy RAM. Notice that DDR2, the actual DDR2 rating is going to say DDR2 on the box. And on the box, when we're talking about DDR2, you'll see it says PC2 and then whatever speed. You go ahead, look at the third column, multiply it times eight, and you get that PC rating. You always multiply times eight. Remember that, it's on the exam. So what is important, if I'm holding two different sticks of RAM and I don't have the notches memorized so I can't tell them apart and the sticks don't say DDR or DDR2, all I need to do is look at that PC rating. If the PC rating says just PC dash, then we know that that's DDR. If it says PC2 and then a dash, then we know that it's DDR2, just by looking at the speed rating. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and keep marching on. Now, what I've got right here is DDR3. Yep, DDR3 once again doubled from DDR2 and created some wonderful bandwidths. Now, again, if we look at the sticks very, very carefully, by the way, DDR3 3 uses a 240 pin stick just like DDR2 does, but again, can we catch it on camera? It should be more obvious this time. We can see that the slots are very much offset, so you can't accidentally put it into the wrong motherboard. DDR3, it didn't have that long of a lifespan. It was around for a while, but it also introduced some much faster speeds. Let's take a look at those. So at this point in the game, I'm hoping you're kind of used to looking at the table. So on the left, once again, is our core speed. Notice that the core speeds keep getting faster and faster. Technology marches on. Motherboards are getting faster. So the actual DDR uh, I.O. speed is going to be four times that in this case. So it's actually doubling once again what we had from DDR2. So our speed ratings, now look, this is very important. See it says DDR3, see it says PC3. That's how you know the speed rating defines the actual technology of RAM. Just because it says PC3, just because it says DDR3, we instantly know that we're talking about DDR3 memory and all you have to do once again, let's take a look at the top one where it says DDR3-800, multiply it times eight and you get the actual PC3 speed rating. People will say to me, Mike, why is these two different speed ratings so important? Well, the answer is pretty simple because different RAM makers will use one or the other. A lot of them are using both when you actually look on the box itself, but I can't guarantee it. And I want you to be able to be able to walk into your computer store and order the right stuff for your system. The motherboard book itself is going to use these to tell you what kind of RAM you need. So be comfortable with this terminology. The last type of general purpose RAM I want to talk about is DDR4, and I've got a stick right here. Now, DDR4 uses a 288 pin stick, and again, this one you can see it's well offset from anybody else. There's no question mark that these are different types of technology. DDR4 is the fastest RAM that's described on the CompTIA A Plus exam, and right now it's by far the most common, and it's probably going to be around for a while. DDR4 has some outrageous speeds. Let me show you those. As we take a look at the speeds here with DDR4, first of all, if you look on the left-hand side, these are the motherboard speeds. They're getting faster. But this time, as opposed to the other tables, we, we tend to use the term bandwidth when we're talking about DDR4. So what we're talking about is MT per second. We're talking about mega transfers per second. So that means the actual amount of data that's being moved, not necessarily just the clicks of the clock. So, but we still have our DDR4 and our PC speed rating. When we're talking about DDR4, when we talk about speed ratings, we use the nomenclature DDR4 and PC4. Like any other type of technology, RAM has been improving over the years. What's important for you is that when you're picking a particular motherboard, that motherboard must use a particular type of technology. The newer types of boards tend to use the newest technology, but there's plenty of room for older technology RAM. You'd be surprised how many big laser printers or dedicated systems still use older RAM. Check out 
any electronic store, you'll see you can still buy DDR2 today. So make sure you're comfortable with the different types of technologies, make sure you're comfortable with the pin counts, and make sure you use the right RAM for your system.